me so yummy All this sauce so yummy No, you want this yummy Yummy all no time Hi there, welcome to Starbucks. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. What can I get started for you? May I do a grande iced dirty chai with oat milk? Yeah. With oat milk? Yes, please. How many shots do you want in that dirty chai, by the way? Just one? Uh, I could do two, actually. Yeah, yeah. For sure, I got you. Thank you. All right, and is there anything else I can get you? No, that'll be all. All right, it's going to be 725 at the window. Thank, Thank you. you. 725 Ah, oh, the f seven twenty five. Then again, I am wearing Telfar <laughs> and I have Delbar bag and driving a Pulsar. Hi, thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thanks. You know, I had to start this video off getting the gayest drink known to humankind. A nice coffee from Starbucks. Mm. Actually, this isn't a nice coffee. This is an iced oat milk dirty chai. But the point is, it's iced. It's in a Starbucks cup. Gay. I want today's video to talk about a few things. The buying process and the ownership experience so far. The buying process took quite a bit of time. I placed my deposit. There was a $1,000 deposit required to order this car on January 13th of 2020. The expectation for delivery was sometime at the end of the year. I didn't care. I had a car at the time. I work from home, so having a car every day wasn't a requirement. So I didn't mind putting down a grand to wait for a brand new electric vehicle to market. I put the money down January 13th of 2020. Polestar acknowledged the order June 4th, 2020. Once the order was acknowledged, the delivery time started coming into light a little bit. It started as September, and then as September hit, it moved to October. October became November, November, December, December, January, and I was getting to a point where I was talking to the, the, the dealership manager saying, you know, if this goes far into 2020 or even into 2021, I might just pull the plug and get a a Tesla. Oh, no, okay, I, I'm just kidding. You know, I'm just kidding. We got jokes. Teslas are great vehicles. I have my opinions of them, which I will get into, but I really just wanted something brand new. I see so many Teslas in California, so many, and for good reason. They're great cars. The range is a fantastic. The charging network is fantastic, but I'm the kind of person who gets I like having weird things that nobody else has. My last car was a Kia Optima Hybrid, which you see a lot of Kia Optimas. Kia is a popular car brand, but the Optima Hybrid you saw less of, and like the style was a little bit quirkier. It had a lot of really great features. The fuel economy was amazing. I was getting like 38 miles to the gallon combined. And so, you know, it was it was different. I like having something different. And this car uh, is, is quite different. I've been getting a lot of interesting reactions, which I will share later on in this video. Uh, but back to the buying experience. I told the manager of Polestar in Los Angeles, if this gets too far into, into December or even into the new year, I may have to pull the plug. So, what ended up happening was uh, middle of December, the manager says, look, we're still finishing some things up, but what if we, what if we get you this car to, to test drive a little bit and to keep in your garage and to get familiar, shoot some of your, your footage if you like. And then once the paperwork is ready, we can finish off. Great. So I took the delivery of this car December 18th, but I didn't actually sign all of the paperwork officially until at this December 31st <laughs> the last day of the year I, I I officially signed the paperwork for this for this vehicle so from a buying perspective and I believe other folks who have ordered on the forums will will share this sentiment a lot of back and forth a lot of unknowns a lot of confusion a lot of delays which makes sense it's uh, you will uh, partly makes sense Polestar in itself is a brand new brand so getting all of these hiccups and everything worked out it's understandable I'm not upset about that but considering that this is 
co-owned by Volvo, you would think that somebody with their value, their experience, would have this stuff figured out a little bit better than they did. With that said, it's not terrible. I do want to shout out Mike from Polestar Customer Service. He has been seemingly like the sole customer service representative in the United States. Well, that's not true. I have recently spoken with someone else. I don't remember their name, but if you, anyone who's watching this video who is familiar with Polestar and their customer service, you've probably heard Mike's name come up. Mike, if you're watching this, you're the real MVP. Very much appreciate you. Thank you for dealing with all of us and see potential Polestar owners <laughs> and prospects over the course of this past year. You deserve a raise or a promotion. Get that. I want to prepare people. If you're interested in buying a Polestar, I'm sure by the time you see this video, the, the order process is gonna get rolled out now. Again, I've had this car for almost a month now. The only other Polestar 2s I have seen were at the dealership when I went to pick up the and sign the paperwork on the 31st. They, I saw two different Polestar 2s. I believe one was the performance package, one was not. So they were pulling them out of the garage and doing what they needed to do. I assume they were getting them ready for a delivery, which was quite exciting to see, but it was also like, ah, I'm not, pretty soon I'm not gonna be the only one on the road here in Los Angeles, which, you know, I still think there will be significantly less than there were Model 3s at the beginning, but I'm excited to see other ones and to catch them and pull them aside and and say hello. Every early adopter received a $500 charge point charging credit, which is, I think, absolutely fantastic. Honestly, at first I was a little bummed because my, I'm, again, I'm still learning about the, uh, the charging network and, and how that all works. When I first saw ChargePoint, every time I looked at ChargePoint chargers, they were, you know, slow chargers. It was like a couple of miles per hour. They were in Target parking lots and on public access on the street. And so I thought, oh, you're gonna give us a ChargePoint credit? Like, how am I gonna take a road trip or do fast charging with that? But little did I know, ChargePoint partners with a number of different DC fast charging networks including EVgo, which EVgo currently is maxed out at 50 kilowatts, at least from what I've seen in my neighborhood, uh, which is fine. Like 50 kilowatts will get me what I need in, in a pinch. So it's honestly really cool. I think the $500 charging credit, if I'm driving, you know, less than a thousand miles a month, which is what I expect to drive, should get me at least a year of charging not paying out of my pocket, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's perk number one. Perk number two is a little bit more specific to me. So because Polestar initially said, I need to take a drink of this, I've just been holding it. Because Polestar initially said that deliveries were in September, I bought and paid for in my new apartment complex uh, parking. I wanted to reserve a parking spot before they all got taken. And so I've been paying uh, $100 a month in my building for parking from September until now. Working with Mike and customer service, again, they've been really sweet to me. They're actually reimbursing three months of parking from September to the end of December because again, the only reason I paid for parking so early is because I was anticipating getting this car in September. And so they acknowledge that. And I think it's really cool, granted, do I think that they will continue to do this once they're established and deliveries are coming and they, you know, become more of a, a company company? Absolutely not. They're not going to reimburse anyone's parking because somebody's going to order it. They're going to set the right expectations and someone's going to get their car when they expect to get the car. So, but for now, for me, that's 300 bucks that I now get to put towards charging or towards whatever the fuck I want because Polestar saw and sees that customer service at least right now, is is a, a primary focus for them, which is lovely. Another part of the ownership experience, and maybe I don't have a right to touch upon this yet because I've had the car for a month. There's been no reason to service it. However, I want to talk about service because so many Tesla videos that I watch online are talking about how not only are the cars coming with panel gaps and misaligned hoods, and some other things. I, I watched a video recently by G Jeeves. He recently just purchased a Tesla Model Y 
and he's been doing his own reviews and he just had his first review about taking the car into a service center. And the service center was very open and honest about the fact that Tesla's uh, leeway for, for panel gaps and things are actually greater than a lot of other automakers. So while some automakers will say, okay, only a certain number of millimeters or less are acceptable from a panel gap perspective, Tesla allows much higher. And so when he took his car in to get serviced, some of the panel gaps, the Tesla service suggested that that just is what it is. Another thing that's interesting about his video on the Model Y was his, his front trunk, his frunk, his fruit, was misaligned and he went to get that serviced and when he got the car back he goes oh this has been fixed it's been seated correctly but when he showed it in the video it still didn't look like it was aligned at all it looked very much not in alignment they also left fingerprints in his car he has a, a tan headliner and there were fingerprints and dirt and things that were left which it's just unprofessional in my opinion. And now I will say, when I got this car, no panel gaps, no misalignment, nothing. Really the only thing that was quote unquote wrong with this car when I picked it up were swirl marks from overwashing or using the wrong cloths. I had that alleviated. I went to Burbank, uh, Ceramic Pro in Burbank. So shout out those guys. I got a full ceramic coating. They wanted to do some other uh, some other wraps and things in the door cup holders and, and elsewhere, but this car is so new, they they didn't have the, I don't know, the file or the kit to actually do the, the wrap on here. So more to come. Now that I have the ceramic coating, I'm really just more, I'm more excited about the fact that there are no more swirl marks. And when I wanna wash it, I literally now just have to take like a water power washer and that's it. Um, I'm letting some of these people go, but they're not paying attention. You gonna go? Nope, sorry. Sorry, tried. So I got the car ceramic coated and I'm more excited about being able to just power wash it and let it air dry. I don't have to worry about waxing or wiping it down. Um, a lot easier to clean. But to get a brand new car, and the only thing that I've had to worry about are swirl marks in the paint, which has now been fixed with my own ceramic coating, which I was going to get done anyway. It's pretty good. It's pretty good to have a brand new car and the only thing I have to worry about from a, from a quality perspective is the swirl marks in the paint from overwashing. Can't be too mad about that. I will say I'm about 700-ish miles on this car. There is a like a squeaky noise coming from the trunk area. We're gonna do some research and see if other people have experienced this as well. But again, for having a brand new car, overall interior fit and finish, like everything is really solid. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. The first service I think for this car is due at 18,000 and some change miles so i won't even have to take this car in to get serviced until at least two years based on what i, I plan on driving like it'll be a good tw at least 24 months i would say maybe before i get this car serviced so we're gonna have to see how that plays out but again i'm really grateful for the quality of the build everything is solid there's really no other creaking or rattling in this car and me and my gay iced coffee are super excited about that All right, I just left Redstone Firearms, super solid people. Uh, it's owned by a couple, they're really nice. They get me in and out. It's always busy, there are always people here, but I got my four little boxes of ammo, signed up for a beginner shooting class because despite buying this firearm, I haven't fired it yet. <laughs> um, I kind of just wanted to buy it, get it in my possession, and now I have to take classes for it. So starting in February now, I just paid, uh, it's a hundred bucks for like a beginner's class. I'll, maybe I'll do that and if, if y'all wanna see some firearm videos from a gay person, let me know and I'll, I'll set that up. Mmm, I love iced coffee, I love chai. Ladies, if your man drinks iced coffee, he sucks dick. If he uses a straw, he also sucks dick. Don't get it twisted. Iced anything from Starbucks is for gay men only, period, and women, and trans folks. But if it's a man and you got a man and he drinking this shit, he gay. 
So the experience of owning this car, the first thing I wanna talk about are people's reactions. Even just now in this parking lot, I I was outside waiting to get my, my text that my, my ammunition was ready and this guy hopped over this wall over here at the McDonald's and was like, yo man, is this your car? I was like, yeah, he's like, what is this? I've never seen this before. I'm like, oh, it's a Polestar, blah, 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 blah. To be honest, he actually looked like somebody who would storm the Capitol. <laughs> So it was kind of uncomfortable, but he was, you know, curious and excited and nice. The first public reaction I got, I was in a parking garage at Target and the operator, he was in his little booth. He sees the car, he runs out of his office and he's like, yo man, what is this? The color is so sick. And I was like trying to tell him and share in that excitement with him, but there was a row of cars behind me. I was just trying to get out of this, <laughs> out of this parking garage. So that was the first time. The second public reaction, I was on Broadway, downtown LA between 5th and 6th Street. And uh, this group of young people, probably early 20s, two women, one man walked by and they were like, yo, what kind of car is that? And I go, it's a Polestar. And they're like, oh, what? I go, it's a Polestar. It's co-owned by Volvo. And they're like, oh, and then a couple seconds go by and the man goes, you need an assistant. <laughs> and then the third reaction has honestly just been like onlookers, people on the street, like walking past it, doing a double take, walking back, taking photos. And if I'm around, they're like, hey, what kind of car is this? So it's funny because despite my appearance and me enjoying having interesting things or purchasing interesting things to look at, I'm not a person who likes attention. If anything, all this attention makes me really anxious and nervous. But I think it's cool. Like, I think it's cool that this car is so polarizing to look at that literally almost everyone, whether I'm driving, walking down the street, their heads are turning or they're like waving at me. And literally in this Starbucks drive through when I was pulling out, I saw this girl like looking at it and kind of like trying to see what the logo and the emblem was and my windows were up. And so I didn't acknowledge her, but, um, <laughs> and again, don't like attention. So I did what I could to, I don't want to, I don't want to say I'm ignoring people, but it's a lot of attention and I like to keep to myself. So that's what the reaction so far has been. A lot of people turning their heads, a lot of people asking me what kind of car this is, saying it looks awesome. So Polestar, you should be very proud and very excited of this EV that you've made. The next note on ownership I wanna bring up is charging. I am going to do a fuller, more comprehensive review on charging. It's pretty straightforward. I, it uses a combo CCS plug. There are, in California, plenty of fa DC fast chargers. Most of them are 50 kilowatt, which uh, just for some light perspective, last night I charged the car, I believe it was at 55, 56% and it charged to 88% in 40 minutes. Now, of course, it charges at a faster rate if the percentage is 10% or less. I have been to an Electrify America charging station before. It charges at 150 kilowatts. Um, you know, that should, in theory, go from 10 to 80% in roughly 30 minutes. My first experience at an Electrify America charger, I believe the maximum charging rate was 112 kilowatts. So again, when I do my review over the Martin Luther King Jr. Day holiday, it will be way more comprehensive. This really just pulled out in front of traffic in her pickup truck like she's somebody. Anyway, I will do a full comprehensive review when I do this road trip over the holiday. So. Please be patient with me. If there are other features about the car or anything else you wanna see between now and you know 10 days from now, please comment what you would like to see. But uh, just know that from a charging perspective, um, at 50 kilowatt chargers, it's generally hovering around like the high 40s until 80% and then it drops significantly. If I'm at less than 10%, it, it generally hits, uh, you know, on a 50 kilowatt charger, it's hitting 50 or high 40s. And on the 150 kilowatt chargers, when it's less than 10%, it'll hit 112. But then once it starts, uh, once the battery capacity starts filling up, there's a huge drop off at 80%, which I don't think is, is surprising considering uh, you know the software and wanting to protect the battery capacity but way more to come when it comes to battery i do want to say i'm sure a lot of people who are new to this channel and new to polestar obviously a lot of you don't know me 
I believe in human rights and empathy, and I believe that everyone deserves a right to survive and live and eat and, and work. And I can empathize, honestly, literally with anyone, regardless of your political beliefs, who you are, where you're from, what you look like. I truly find beauty and value in everyone. With that said, I don't believe in hatred and I don't believe in discrimination. Unsurprisingly, you're watching a gay person talk about cars. Um, <laughs> so I would hope that you wouldn't think this is like a Trump stand channel because it is certainly not. But I just wanna emphasize, I went to my first protest in, in March after George Floyd was killed and being at a protest like that, that is honestly peaceful. And if you, you know, if you look at protests that were happening around that time in Los Angeles, you'll see cop cars on fire, you'll see buildings being destroyed. And if you have any sense whatsoever and do a little bit of research outside of Facebook links, you can find people who clearly don't, I don't wanna say don't belong at these protests, but um, are like pop in out of nowhere, start spray painting and lighting things on fire. And as soon as you try to call them out, or say, hey, what are you doing? You're 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 tainting the message and the 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 reason for this peaceful protest, and they like disappear into the night. Do some research on whether or not on why some of this vandalism and things were happening at some of these peaceful protests, but you'll quickly learn and start to understand that um, there's a lot of sabotage in the world and. Um, People like myself, most of the people who were at the Black Lives Matter police brutality protests were there peacefully just asking to not be shot and killed. With that said, seeing what has gone on in Capitol Hill is unsurprising. The fact that these people can beat cops and barge into what is supposed to be one of the most secure institutions in our nation and if you watch all these videos, there were law enforcement officers just opening the gates and letting these people in. If you, for any shadow of a doubt, think that racism doesn't exist, it's really sad because racism does exist and I've experienced it firsthand and I'm, I'm light skinned, I'm privileged. Like when I think about people who are darker skinned, darker complected, who, dress a certain way, whatever you want to say, my heart just cries so much. And when I think about like the years and years and years of racism and discrimination before now, this isn't new. People who say, oh, this is so un-American, this is not what we're about. What happened at the Capitol is exactly what this country is about. The fact that white people can do be violent and break into what is supposed to be like a sacred space within the United States and be met with nothing. They got arrested later. They're like, oh, let's, you know, they, the FBI started looking for these people and arresting them after the fact. Had this been a Black Lives Matter of actual peaceful protest, there would be blood all over the steps of the Capitol building. And so there's a lot of work to do in this country. I am optimistic in in a sense, like, do I think this is gonna be solved overnight? No, do I think it's gonna be solved in my lifetime? No, but I'm going to use my voice and my platform and my channel to lift up black and brown, indigenous, queer voices, women's voices, because we've been silenced for a really long time. And it's time it's time to hold people accountable. If you have family members who are saying racist, hold them accountable. This is, there's no more, there's no more time to say, oh, they're just old, they're from another time. It is what it is. They're just racist because they're old. That doesn't fly anymore. If you are a person of color and you are discriminating against somebody else, we don't have time for that either. That is upholding the same white supremacy that is being taken advantage of by the folks who stormed the Capitol. If you're a black person and you're homophobic or transphobic, get that shit out. If you are a gay man and you're a misogynist, get that shit out. I can make all of these different comparisons, but it is past time for us who are marginalized to band together and to be with one another 
because it's about to be too late. We can't keep doing this. We can't keep hating on each other. We are already hated. Black and brown and queer people and women are already so hated in this country and discriminated against. We should not be discriminating against each other. We have to stop. So if you don't have any female friends, make some. If you don't have any black or brown friends, make some. If you don't have any queer or trans friends, make some today after this because this does not fly anymore. Thank you for listening. If you thought that this channel was just going to be a gay man talking about cars and you're disappointed, sorry to disappoint. Click that unsubscribe button. I would hope that you just like don't dislike this video because I'm speaking from the heart and I really genuinely care. But, you know, do whatever you want to do. That's all I got to say. This is JJ with Queers and Steers. Me and my gay iced coffee. Peace out.